Hello and welcome to the Caden Gordon Show today's best country mix. Joining me right here today is Sean Silk. Sean, how's it going? Going well, Caden. How are you yourself? I'm doing quite all right. Thanks so much for taking the time to come on the show today. Thank you. You're, right. You're very welcome. So let's get started by getting to know you a little bit and uh, how you got started in music. Well, I was always interested in music and indeed in songwriting from a young age. I was lucky enough, my mother paid for piano lessons and she made me keep them up and um, they came good in the end. I didn't like it because I wasn't keen on classical music. When I was about 12 or 13, I started to play pop music by ear and uh, that stood me in good stead then later on. Picked up the guitar later on. Um, I really didn't get seriously into if, what you might call professional music until well into my 50s when I got an opportunity to do a, a one-year music course concentrating on songwriting. And from that, I learned the art of structuring a song for the singer and um, things like introduction, uh, background instrumentation and so forth, all the fine art uh, that's involved in, in the studio recording. So I'm really only professionally uh, involved since about 2018, the last five years. What is it about music that you absolutely love about it? I think it's the ability to create a little pen picture of a situation in lyrics and to match that with the mood of the, the music itself. I write both the, the lyrics and the music. Um, and I think probably when I was younger, I was probably good at writing poetry, um, but writing poetry and sound lyrics are quite different. They have to be much simpler um, and they have to be um, in tune with, with, with the melody as well. So it's quite an art to get the two to match, but I love that um, uh, the way they come together and create word pictures in the listener's mind. That's what I love about it. Now, I know you were telling me before we jumped on that you have a new single that's out. Tell us a little bit about any upcoming projects or singles that you got. Okay, so it's a studio band that I put together with my producer and his brother. His brother plays bass, uh, Rowan himself, and my producer plays lead guitar. His dad actually is quite interesting in that he was involved in the Australian um, music industry and indeed played with a number of fairly high profile left field type of bands over there. And he's still involved in the family business. And then we recruit um, female singers that we might come across from time to time. So in 2018, I had a number of country, country pop songs ready to go. And I'd come across a very good um, female singer called Darian Chase, um, an Irish girl, um, very professional in her approach. She had made some home demos with me and we put the proposition to her of recording a complete album. So the album's been out a while. It's called In the Heart of the Castle. The band's name again is Weekend Special. Uh, we recorded the album in 2018 and uh, in last year we did a complete remixed version of it. And uh, there's some, uh, we were very pleased with the remix um, versions of them. Currently I'm working with uh, a, a singer I came across busking. I don't know if you use the word busk in the United States. It means a street singer. Um, and uh, this girl, Kyla Bell, she's still at Music College. Um, she uh, plays at weekends in the center city and attracts quite a, a, a strong following of people. Quite, quite, uh, quite a good money maker for the, for the weekend. People just donate, throw money into the hat. So we've three songs uh, recorded with her. The first one is out, it's called Make Room for the New. And we'll be releasing the other two as part of an EP project over the next few months. That's awesome, congratulations to you, Sean. Thank you very much. What advice would you give somebody that might wanna start doing music, whether that be singing, writing, performing, anything like that, what would you tell them? Well, there was a rather severe teacher in uh, the one year course that I did. And uh, we'd nearly call him Mr. Grumpy because, um, but he was severe for a reason. And I think the reason was he wanted us to make up our minds. Did we see music as a hobby, a pastime, something we'd enjoy doing or a career? And as it happens, 
out of the 40 people who started, maybe only 20 were left after four months. And of those 20, I'd say only one myself actually went into the music business professionally. Um, so that's the most important thing to, 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 to decide. Are you talented enough and committed enough to make it a career, bearing in mind it's extremely difficult to break through? Or are you content just to get good at maybe playing an instrument or doing a bit of composing, but you're quite happy to leave it in your mind as something you enjoy doing? It's, it's certainly a lifelong hobby and a very rewarding one. Um, and sometimes a person like that might do a little bit of song competition um, entries and you never know you could strike it lucky there and uh, come up with a song which um, attracts the attention of the industry but in general it's as easy as lightning striking twice to to make it in the music business so it's it's very um, important to be realistic from the word go um i'm not sure myself will i ever make it but i know that I have a, a, a already a substantial body of work of three albums and um, quite a lot of singles on release. My own particular hope is that I can attract the attention of a publishing company. Publishers are people who um, not just, nowadays they tend to more collect the money than anything else and look after that technical side and protecting copyright and so forth. But the best of them also place songs and um, they get to be in the networking with uh, record companies to know when a particular project is short of a few songs. And if the publisher is respected, he or she will be allowed place or suggest a song. And I think that's the most likely way that I might become uh, successful as a songwriter in the future. But in the meantime, I just keep writing. And oh, the other bit of advice I'd say, uh, answering your question again is, it's very important to have a lot of output. Productivity is very important. If you're not writing a song a week or a song a fortnight, there's something wrong. You, 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 um, if you can imagine, uh, you know, when you read about classic albums when, that they were put together, and they sometimes say, we'd 80 songs to start with, and we whittled it down to a dozen. But what happens if you don't have the 80 songs or the 70 or the 60? So the, uh, a, a good, strong, sustained output of completed songs is very important. If people want to learn more about you, where can they find you? Well, the most handy one-stop spot is seansilksongwriter.com. That's S-E-A-N-S-I-L-K-E, seansilksongwriter.com. Uh, and if they want to see all my material on uh, YouTube, uh, where there's about 25 videos of different recordings at the moment, if they just type in Sean Silk YouTube playlist into Google, Sean Silk YouTube playlist. And that's a really handy way. You get all the material lined up for you. You can listen to song after song and you might decide you like my country stuff or you like my electronic or pop stuff. Uh, there's quite a variety there. If you had one message to tell anyone that might be listening, any of my listeners, or any of your fans, or just anyone in general, what would you tell them? Now, that's an awful question, Caden. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'd be more inclined not to talk just about music, but to talk about life in general. And I think the one message I would give to people based on my own life experience is don't carry resentments around with you. So many of us find it difficult to live today this particular Thursday, this April the 27th, just within those 24 hours. We're looking back to the past about opportunities lost. We're looking to the future, what might or might not happen. And we lose out on um, making the most of the 24 hours that we have each time. We, so many people don't realize they're carrying around resentments. Maybe you were a, fav you were a less favored son or daughter in the family. Um, and, and, and you carry that perhaps to your grave. But those resentments, it's a, it's, it's, it's a great um, uh, opportunity in life if you can shed them and just try and simply be of help. And um, as they used to say in the old um, um, Alcoholics Anonymous recovery, let's show kindness, tolerance, patience and love to each person I meet. Sean, is there anything that I forgot to mention that you would like to mention today? 
No, I think you've, well, there is another, um, at the risk of complicating it for your listeners, I have a second band called Camden Place, which is a place, a street name in, in Dublin and in Ireland where I'm speaking from, C-A-M-D-E-N, Camden Place. And that's a different style of music. I'm working with a, a, um, a very talented um, uh, singer. She's what we call Irish Nigerian. We have a lot of immigration to Ireland from different parts of the world. Um, so somebody whose parents were Nigerian could actually have been born here in Ireland. And we're seeing the benefit of that in a sort of a multicultural sense in, in, the, in the music industry and also in sports where we're getting um, black athletes in soccer and running and so forth. Rachel is a great singer. And uh, if you're interested in the sound of that, it's much more in the pop mold. You can look up um, Camden Place Music dot IE, but you can also find those same videos in the playlist I already mentioned. Sean, thanks so much for taking the time to come on the Katie Gordon Show today's Best Country Mix. We appreciate your time so much. So thank you. Thanks a million, Caden. All the best.